Hey, so I'm going to show you how to do this page full of acorns. But first, I'm going to show you a close up of how to do one acorn so that if you want to get really, really detailed with each acorn on the page, you can. However, if you want to do the jumble of acorns on the page in a really simple way, just watch this next part. Then we'll move on to a lot of acorns. I'm going to show you the steps to draw this so you, if you just want to do one big acorn, you'll know. So the acorn cap comes around like this and then we kind of cheat downward a little bit and we're going to curve back up and we have that crescent moon look to what's happening here. And then we'll we close this up a little bit more. But our stem that connects right here has a little hat at the top. And then for this bottom part of our acorn, we're, we're not going to be over here. We're going to start down here. And we'll come down. We'll do the same thing here. We'll come down. And we'll almost get to that point but we'll kind of make it a curvy point. And then while you have your pencil, I like this little glare on the side of the acorn. It's really fun. If you want to be a little extra and you want to put a glare on yours, you can just follow the uh, contour of your acorn. Add that little glare. And then when you go in to paint it, don't paint that part. So you'll put your darker paint here, your lighter paint here, and then up at the top, uh, on your second coat of paint, you can do that cute little kind of curvy action like this, and then the other way as well. So we'll come down and we'll do this in paint and give our acorn its a very cute little hat. So also in your paint, you're going to add a little bit of dark here, but kind of you know, some lines that give that stem a little bit of, a little bit of, like it helps it look round. Now we will proceed with, if you want to do a page full of acorns and have them be really fun, that's next. You're going to work in pencil, so leave those markers alone. This is, this is just pencil sketch and then watercolor. So an acorn is basically... A little round cap with a piece showing for that stem and then we round it off and the bottom of the acorn can be a lot of different shapes it can be just round it can be very short and fat but it's going to start just under that little dome and come down to a point so then let's make another acorn cap this one can be bigger can be smaller Mine's bigger. So there's our little acorn cap. This one's stem is going to go this way. And let's see, will that be short, long? Some of them kind of come around and curve maybe this way. So there's a silly little acorn. And then we can make another acorn hat. Maybe this one's very wide. And its stem is going to stick straight up. Cute. And then it can be kind of a long, fat acorn. Very nice. Now let's flip that paper over. These acorns are really going wild. So we'll now we'll have one that is this way. So here's my little acorn cap with my acorn stem. And what shape will this one be? Maybe this one will just be a regular little acorn. So it's coming to its point. And then we'll have one coming from over here. Let's see, this one will be a little dome, a regular stem. It's gonna be almost like a crescent moon 
acorn dome. And then it will come down to a little point. And we just keep doing that until we have all the acorns we want coming from all the directions we want. You can draw as many acorns as you would like. You can even have some that are so huge we can't see the whole thing. This one's falling off the page because it's so giant. And then we'll have one here. It's also very giant. Good work, everybody. Happy fall. <sighs> now that you have all these little acorns drawn, grab your brush and I'm gonna show you how to paint one of them. Then you'll know how to paint all of the others. So let's find one that is, let's see, this one's pretty, pretty good acorn shape. So first I'm gonna paint the bottom of the acorn. And I'm gonna go with like yellow or yellow orange or some mixture of all those. But I'm going straight in in yellow and I'm gonna get it nice and watery. I'm gonna paint, probably gonna paint all the bottoms of the acorns first and then I'll go paint the tops. And I'm gonna use traditional fall colors. So I'll use yellows, browns, oranges, maybe a little bitty bit of green. But this one's got some yellow. And then I want to put some orange in there too. So let's get some orange. And I'm going to make the orange be down here at the bottom. And I'm not going to mix it in. I'm just going to see what the paint decides to do. All right. So then maybe my next acorn will be orange. Let's see. We'll make this one totally orange. Or acorn at the edge of the page here. Can be totally orange. And grab some of this orange because that's kind of a lot, huh? This one just has got too much paint in it. I am not happy with what's going on here, so give it a little help. And then I'll pull some of this orange and put it in the other one that I have here. All right, and maybe some brown. Not always a big user of the brown, but that brown is perfect for acorns. So I'm gonna add some brown here. And as I move over this side of the acorn, I'm gonna try to just mix it in with the paint that's there. This acorn is already not my favorite acorn, but sometimes the first ones are like that. And then maybe I'll put a little dab of yellow up here at the top to give this one a little bit more of an interesting color combo. That's fine. All right. You, I don't like what's happening here. Let's put some more water in there. All right. Now I can do one that is, I'm start with brown. Hmm, who's next? I have a lot of paint on here, so I need a, a bigger acorn. I'll start with brown on this one. I'm going to cover the whole acorn with water and a little bit of brown. There's some more brown. I'm kind of trying to keep one side of the bottom of the acorn a little darker and then one side a little bit brighter. And that can be done with any colors you want. You can have rainbow acorns. They are your acorns to do with as you please. I think on this one, I'm going to add a little yellow. I'll add some yellow, hmm, yellow at the top, maybe on this top half. And then I think I'm going to put some green in this one too. Maybe this lime green, which if you don't have lime green, it's just green and yellow together. And I'm going to give it a little water so it'll all get real blendy and have a good time down there. Sort of feel like this one needs some more darkness at the bottom. 
There we go. All right, who is next, little acorns? Let me go back to my yellow. We can have a little yellow acorn over here. Hello, little yellow acorn. Maybe it'll have some green also. Let's give it a little bit of green. Or a lot of green. Sometimes more paint comes out of the brush than I want, but I'm just gonna tell it where to go. Go to this side. We'll let it dry and see what happens. And we're gonna continue this painting in all of our little acorns. I'm gonna paint the bottom part first, but if you want to, you can always paint the top part. The reason I wanna paint all the bottom parts first and then paint all the top parts is that's gonna help me let the bottom parts dry so that when we come in to paint those top parts, it won't bleed into the bottom part. If it does, you can always fix it, but I would prefer to just not have to fix it. So that's my goal. So we're starting with orange on this one. Maybe I'll add some brown and some yellow. So I'll add a little bit of yellow. Ooh, that's a lot of yellow. Hmm, let's add yellow down here at the bottom. I like to think if I was a little squirrel, I was looking at these acorns. That would make an acorn look delicious to me as a squirrel. Would it be if it was brown? Or would I like them more ripe and green? What would I like if I was a little squirrel? And would I be, um, is this acorn for me now? Or is it for later? Am I saving this for the winter? Am I gonna go squirrel it away in a tree somewhere or is it for eating now? All right. I'm gonna go with some orange yellow for this one. Ooh, I like that color. That's a fun color. This color is just nothing but sunshine. Think of beautiful sunshine on a fall day and ooh, how nice it would feel to walk around feeling those leaves crunch. A little bit of a breeze. Maybe you see some butterflies flying around. Maybe you hear some little birds. Hear some tiny animals scampering around under your feet little squirrels. So you can see what we're doing here. Just keep moving on through your acorns and make them all the colors that you want. Ooh, I like that one. I like the yellow with the brown on the side. That looks really great. Okay, let's see. Let's start. I'll start with brown on one. I haven't done that in a while. Ooh, that's dark. I'm hoping that yours come out a little better because if you've only drawn the acorn in pencil, it's gonna be probably gonna be a little bit cuter. But I don't mind if mine looks a little different. So I've got brown. What should I bring in? I haven't had any green in a bit. So I'll do some green through the top here. Then I'm gonna rinse out my brush because that was a lot of green and I don't want that much green, but I still wanna use my brush. <laughs> so that's how I get around that. And I'm gonna swish it into this brown and let it kind of, it hits that olive green color. But that's okay, I don't mind. And I might put a little dab, tiniest dab of yellow in the tip of that one. Ooh, that was a fun one, all right. A few more 
bottom of acorns left. So let's see. I'm going to I'm gonna go back to my yellow. Yellow is always good. Add yellow to the one. We can't see this whole acorn, so we may not need as much color as we have in some of the other ones. I'm going to go yellow and orange in this one. And since I have a lot of orange over here, I'll, I'll just add orange to this side. And then I'll dab some water at that line where these two colors meet and ask them to please melt into each other nicely. So I got a few more acorns left. Some of these like are a little bit watery, so I'm gonna bend my paper so the paint doesn't roll off of the, <laughs> that acorn. All right, this one up here. Hmm, I think this is gonna be a memory. Start with lighter green. Green. What should I put with it? Let's go yellow. I'm gonna put some yellow up near the top. Get that all mixy mixy. And then maybe I'll add just a little tiniest dot of brown right over here at the edge. That was really not even a tiny dot, was it? There, now we got some brown on this brush. Perfect. Right, I'm gonna leave that there and see what happens. It almost looks like a little face with hair. I don't know that that's what I want. So, <laughs> let's just add some water and get that to melt on down into the, now that I've seen the face and the hair, I can't unsee it, I keep seeing it. Okay. And we have some tiny baby ones that we need to do. Let's see, a lot of green, a lot of brown. No, just brown. So let's, let's get a just brown over here. Only brown. And this one can be brown too, and we'll add a different color to each of them. Because then I can pick up some of the too much brown paint that I put on that one. Always a great trick. All right, so I painted all the bottom parts of the acorns. Go ahead and put some other color in that brown. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to my dreamy orange and I'll start from this side since I've got orange up there. And I just need to put something else in that one. Let's do yellow. And I'll do yellow up here. All right, so all of my acorns have the, the body, the fruit part of the acorn is done. Um, I'm gonna fan a little bit just to get some of these dry. I don't want to start painting the tops of these until the bottoms are at least dry at the edge. They're so cute. I love all of the paintings we do where we have these individual spaces and we can mix fun colors in them. That's always a good time. letting these dry. I'm thinking about what colors am I going to use to paint the tops of these acorns? Um, probably more greens and browns. And I'll use definitely the greens and the browns up on my orange ones. But then I have to think, all right, what color is the cap on my acorn going to be when the acorn itself is green and brown? Because I don't want it to match. I want it to be a little bit different. 
Let's see. I think what I might do is mix some watery colors down here. So I'm going to mix up. I'm going to mix up a little bit of black because this black is really dark. And I don't want dark black. I know. I want kind of a just a very boring blackish brown. There we go. Just a darker brown. The color of perhaps a friendly bear in the woods. Alright, so I have my darkish brown and then let's see. Let's go with like the dark green. So I'm going to make a little pile of green here. Add some water to it. Green, green, green. And then to my green, I'm going to add a little brown also. So this is, wow, that's a lot of brown. Okay, so we're going to add some more green to that. There we go. So now we have this lovely, this is more of a, what about, like an olive green. So these are fall colors, very foresty. And now that we've got those, we can get started painting our little acorn hats. So let's see who's dry. Well, this one's dry because it doesn't have a, <laughs> there's no bottom on it. We haven't painted anything yet. I'm going to start in with yellow here and then water it down and paint that little stem, get that little stem and fill it in and I'm going to add one of those other colors. Let's see. With my acorn hat, so I'm going to stay kind of in a gray green brown. So let's get some of this olive and tap it on through and i'm going to let this dry however it will we might come put some more texture on the tops of these acorns in a little while but now i'm going to look for one that is dry and get my brown this one looks dry get my brown and come in here and add a top layer of brown. And you'll continue around to the rest of the little acorn hats until you have painted all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go green here. And I like that bright green. I don't know that I'm going to mix anything with that. And I'm going to start in with olive green on this little friend here. What I'm trying to do is not get super close to the actual acorn because that way I know the paint won't run into it. Again, if it does, not a problem. We will just figure it out. All right, I have a lot of paint in here so I can suck a little bit up with my brush and maybe put it over here. There we go. So I'm gonna dab some more of that olive green. Bring it on around. And you may be wondering at this point, how do I keep these from looking like peppers? Well. I'll show you in just a minute. As we let these tops dry, work our way across the page, um, we are gonna be able to put, as this paint gets drier, we'll put some pattern on top of it. 
with more of the same color. And it'll give us that acorn look. You can also put the pattern on there with a marker if you don't feel like doing it with a pen. That's always acceptable. You definitely want to work to your own strengths and do things that you're comfortable with. How did I miss these two little spots? Oh, that's not the same color. All right, no harm done. <laughs> This one, <laughs> let's start with a, maybe that green would be good on this one. Yeah, I like it. Okay. And I think really you can do an acorn any color. If you want, if you want to do something, you know, off the wall and not use nature colors, you can have blue and purple acorns. Whatever feels good to you, whatever your eye is saying, do that. This is your art, it's your time. This art isn't for anybody else, it's just for you. So I want you to have fun doing this. And make sure that you let yourself do that. When you're making art for yourself and it's not for a grade, it's not for, you know, no one's paying you to make this art. You are taking time for yourself. You are letting your brain solve creative problems. This is called self-care. You are doing something, and even if it is not something specific that's going to help you reach a goal, get things done, it's allowing your mind some rest. And that my friends, is very important. It's important to exercise the creative muscles in your brain, just like it's important to exercise the muscles in your body when you can. When you're out trying to do something fun, maybe you're trying to eat something. Maybe you're trying to go for a walk in the park. It's not any fun when somebody is over your shoulder telling you how to move your feet or how to do something that you just want to figure out and, and explore on your own. So I think art is the same way. Sometimes I like to tell people that I appreciate their input on my art, but um, tell them that I would like to give myself the chance to figure out these creative problems on my own. Which is kind of as a nice way of saying, hey, leave me alone. Um, but when you explain it in a nice way, sometimes people think, oh, I'm totally going to let you solve that problem. Yes, that's great. just playing with this paint and letting it do what the paint is going to do. Our acorns are, it just looks like they're all in a bounce house, doesn't it? Okay, so the lot of the browns here, what am I going to do? I'll do a lighter green. A lighter olive green, there we go. Oh, that's a cute one. I like this color combo a lot. Adorable. I just have one acorn left after this. And it's one where we can't see the whole acorn. Ew. What color will you be? A little hot orange acorn. So we've got some warm orange. We've got a little green. Let's do, I'm going to do this olive green, and we'll see what that looks like. I think it's going to work. I 
All right. Now we're going to dry a little bit. We're just going to fan it so that we can let our acorns get dried a bit. I'm using another piece of art to fan. These acorns are adorable. My last step on these acorns is I'm going to go in and add texture to the top of the acorn. The bottom of the acorn is pretty smooth, but the top of the acorn has almost like little, little roof shingles. It has a little texture to it. So I'm going to go to one that I know is dry, which this one's pretty, hmm, are you dry? It's dry. And we're going to work, like I talked about before, we're going to work Wet on dry is what this technique is called. So I'm gonna get some very watery paint and come in. And this is the top of my acorn, so I'm gonna make some little stripes. And then some little texture. So this is a lot of little arches. That's one way to do it. You can also do it, let's see, I'm gonna put a little line on here. And you can also do it where it's a little cross hatch, kind of like an ice cream cone. So I'm gonna go get some of this color. I'm gonna wring some of it out of my brush because I need a point on the tip there. And so on this one, I'm gonna make, it's almost like a lot of X's. And then I put that line on the stem. So our little acorns are getting more and more personality. And it doesn't really matter which color you use to make the lines on your acorns hat. It doesn't matter how perfect it is. We just want them to have a little bit of texture on them. So for this one, and you can do a texture in a lot of different ways. But we want it to look sort of like shingles, a little spotty. We want it to be more textured than the other part of the acorn. All right, that is done. So I'm gonna, you can, I'm just mixing all these together. It's a free for all. It's a free for all. And these are really just very light lines. And some of it got down here, so that's okay. I'm just gonna go clean it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna put my little line on the stem. So all of our acorns are getting their little hats. This one, I'll do just a, it's like just a little checkerboard almost. And then put my little line on the stem. Then I'm gonna switch a root so I can have my hand in the right place to work on these other acorns. And let's see, this one. I'm gonna do lines going that way, lines going this way, and a line on my stem. And over here. Lines going that way, lines that way, and a line on that stem. And I have two more, all right. Go in this green for this one that has a green top. And if this is frustrating and you think, no, I don't want to keep doing this, uh, you can use your Sharpie or if you have one or a pen um, to put this texture on here. You don't have to do that with your paintbrush if it's, if it's not bringing you joy. So this one. 
And I'm not being too worrisome, too intricate with this pattern. I just want it to have a little bit of a texture to it. Same here. All right. Just some lines. And then I'm going to put a line on that stem. Now is my favorite part because I'm going to add speckles. Speckles are, they're just a good time. Speckles are diluted paint. So we want it to be, oh, I don't want purple. Oh, purple wouldn't be terrible, I guess. Um, but very watery paint. Super watery. And it can be any color. It can be any combination of colors. So I'll do some orange ones and some yellow ones. And then I might use those colors that I had from before. I think I am going to throw some purple in there. Purple is totally calling my name. All right. Come on, speckles. All right. So I'm going to get watery paint in my brush. And I'm going to hold my brush up kind of high. And I'm tapping with my finger. So now we're getting some little speckles all over the place. And I did purple, so I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to go into yellow. So let's do yellow and you can get your brush close to the paper for bigger, bigger speckles. Um, and if you want really tiny speckles, find something else and tap your brush on there. That'll, they'll all give you kind of a different feel of speckles and you can decide what you like the best. And I would say, I don't think that there is such a thing as too many speckles. Do be careful though, if you are not, you know, in your own space, if you're not at home, that you keep your speckles on your work area. If you're using watercolor, the speckles will, the speckles will come off. No, it's all right. But there we go. And we just need to wait for our speckles to dry. And as always, find a place that you can sign your art. I'm gonna sign mine right here. And there are our acorns.